and see how it tastes. changed for us when we moved into the RV was how we make our coffee. Uh, Before, when we were living the sticks and bricks life, we made our coffee with a Keurig machine. You know, the big Keurig machine with the reservoir on the side and, you know, hot coffee at the touch of a button. But we really did not want to uh, take that with us for a number of reasons. Primarily, counter space and even though we do have a fair amount of counter space relatively speaking when it comes to RVs I didn't want to clutter it up with a whole lot of stuff. You know, one of the issues with a Keurig machine that is fairly widely talked about is the waste that it produces so it with having those little pods generating that much trash we really didn't want to be filling up our trash can that much especially when you're boondocking uh, you're really looking to reduce the waste that you produce. Another issue with the Keurig machine, which has also been talked about, uh, is that the water in the Keurig machine, the system as it goes through the heating mechanism, that that part of the system tends to get scaled up and can potentially start growing some bacteria uh, and so we, knowing that we were going to be hooked up to lots of different water sources and um, even though we've got a good filtration system in the rig, we didn't want to have to deal with that issue either. Uh, so between the waste and um, the water supplies and the counter space, wanting to conserve my counter space as much as possible, we decided we wanted to make coffee a different way. So then it was, all right, well, how do we want to make it? And I did a bunch of research and watched a bunch of YouTube videos, of course, on all different ways to make coffee. Now we could easily have gone back to your typical drip, drip brewers, brewers, but again, those units do tend to take up a fair amount of space on your counter. And just the way things were configured, I didn't really know where I wanted to put such a unit. There wasn't uh, an obvious space on the counter for it to stay out all the time. The other thing with that unit is you still have the issues with scale and bacteria that um, may come up in, you know, start to, to accumulate in the, the heating element system of that kind of a coffee maker. So I wasn't real keen on that idea. Um, so then you start looking at other methods. What we settled on was the pour over method. So I watched a bunch of videos on the pour over method and you've got lots of very expert barista coffee makers out there that will give you the absolute pure way to do a pour over but that's not what this is. So I liked the idea of the pour over for a lot of reasons. Um, so it, it seemed like it would generate less waste. Uh, we could heat up the coffee water once. If I, could, if I adapted it, we could heat up the coffee water once and have coffee for the whole day. And so I'm gonna explain how I have adapted the pour over method to suit our needs. So what I typically do in the morning, um, I will have this all set up already. You can see that what I've got here is a one and a half liter water kettle. And it, we just keep it hooked on this ledge so it doesn't really um, interfere and take up a whole lot of counter space for when you're prepping. 
Um, it's one and a half liters and we just keep it plugged in all the time. It stays here. We hold it down with some of that little museum putty. So we have no problems with it um, on travel days. I don't even have to move it. So I've got that. The first thing I do in the morning is just flick this button. And I just did that right now. And the light comes on and it'll start to boil. So while uh, the water's heating up, let's talk about the rest of the things that I use to make our pour over coffee. So I got this carafe and all of the things, by the way, all these things, of course, I ordered off of Amazon. And if you're interested in any of this stuff, I will put links to these items in the description below. Uh, if you want to take a look at that. So this carafe, it also, I got it in the copper color, but it also comes in a stainless steel color and it's a one and a half liter carafe. Um, so it will hold, depending on the size of your coffee cup, and we typically have pretty coffee, pretty large coffee cups, we can get at least five, sometimes six cups out of this. And that's usually pretty good for the day. I'll have normally at least two cups of coffee. Scott will have one or two cups of coffee. I might throw in another cup of coffee every once in a while. So this, this size is really pretty good. And I just set it right in the sink there. Um, for when when I when the water boils and I just do the pour over right here in the sink Now the other thing you'll need is a coffee dripper and so this is a number three size coffee dripper uh, and um, It comes in I think one two and three and so I think this is the largest that I have seen anyway um, size one coffee dripper would be if you're doing the purest you know, pour over coffee method where you're just making one or two cups. Uh, and it's so it's much smaller. This one is enough to hold the coffee that you need to make this one and a half liters. And this part of it is glass. I didn't want to use any plastic because you're using hot water. You know, they make plastic things now that, that, that don't have the, the PBA leaching out of it, but I really wanted to have a glass um, coffee dripper. So they also have uh, ceramic ones as well, um, if you're interested in that. So I just set that on there. The other thing you're going to need are the coffee filters with the pointed ends. Um, you'll see coffee filters that have, in the grocery store, you'll see coffee filters that are flat on the bottom. And we ran out of these one time and I could not find them in the stores where we were. I couldn't find them anywhere. So. I was desperate and I, I got a pack of the ones with the flat bottom, but I'm just going to tell you that those do not work very well. When you put it in there and you run the coffee through, that flat bottom is not reinforced, so it tends to just spring a hole and then you've got all your grounds in your coffee. It was not pretty. So I've, I've now ordered maybe like a year's supply of these because I didn't want to have to worry about running out for a long time. So when you get it, you it comes with a, a kind of a seamed edge here. And what I do is just kind of fold that seamed edge over so that it sits in the coffee pot really nice or in the coffee dripper nice. So let's talk about coffee. Uh, what I've been doing lately is trying to support some of the local places. I love going to coffee shops anyway. And so if a coffee shop is selling coffee um, by the pound, I usually buy a couple bags of that while I'm in that coffee shop. Uh, otherwise, I just get it at the grocery store and I tend to, I like my coffee pretty strong and dark. And um, I will mix that sometimes, like two thirds of a strong and dark type of coffee with maybe one third of something like a hazelnut or something, just to give it a little bit more flavor. I do that, you know, probably half the time. But otherwise, it's typically a dark blend. Uh, and for pour over, you can get like a medium grind to um, medium to fine, but um, that's probably my personal preference just because I do like strong coffee. Uh, but honestly, if you get just any ground coffee at the grocery store, it will it will generally work. Now, I'll put a link below in the description to um, how you should 
determine the amount of coffee grounds you're going to need for uh, the amount of coffee. It's it's a very um, you know it's almost like baking. There's a certain amount, proportion of coffee grounds per water that you use and um, they'll typically tell you to, to weigh it out on a scale like this and I will say that I did that for probably the first week or so I used the scale just to fine-tune what it needs to be but honestly you don't have to do that every time if you're making the same amount you really don't have to scale it out every time and what I've discovered is that um, every day if I do three heaping scoops that that is perfectly fine and that makes coffee just the way we like it so those are all the components that I use for making coffee and um, we'll get started with it just as soon as the water boils so the water's done boiling and um, the nice thing about this too is that this water kettle uh, will work when we're just on battery power uh, it'll work on battery power now that we've upgraded to the Battleborn lithium batteries I will tell you if you're still using if you're still have AGM batteries uh, or the uh, lead acid batteries that I do not recommend you try to uh, use a water kettle if you've got the AGM or lead acid batteries uh, we did try to use it on our AGMs and it pulls so much power I will tell you that but the Battleborns handle it with no problem so I'm happy when we're boondocking I can make coffee without having to turn the generator on so when the, once the water's boiled the first thing you want to do is pour it into the dripper into the filter and just get the filter wet all around before you even put coffee in the filter and what that does does a couple things so it gets the filter wet and kind of rinses leaches out any of the kind of weird paper residue um, out of the filter and that leaches out and what you'll do then the hot water goes right into the carafe and you just swish it around a little bit that warms the carafe up for when you really start pouring the coffee in so you just pour the hot water out and then you can start putting the coffee in um, I like that you warm up the carafe with that hot water I will tell you that this carafe keeps coffee warm all day every once in a while I like to have a cup of coffee at say 2 in the afternoon and that last cup of coffee is still hot there's still steam rising from the coffee as I pour it in my cup even in the middle of, of the afternoon when I've made coffee early that morning so it's a great carafe it really works well and heating it up with the water um, ahead of time that definitely helps so next like I said before I'm just gonna put my three heaping scoops of coffee in the filter and sometimes I kind of just like even it out a little bit uh, then the next part is according to what I saw on some YouTube channels what you want to do is pour a little bit of water in there just to kind of get all the grounds wet and then let them sit for about 30 seconds because what will happen is that initial wetting of the grounds releases some CO2 out of the coffee grounds and your coffee will be better if you let that release and and kind of rest a little bit before you really make the rest of the coffee so let's take a look and see what that looks like okay so I'm hand holding the uh, phone now and to see if we can capture the bubbles and I will tell you that um, different coffees because I'm buying different coffees all the time you can see you can kind of see it give it a good soaking make sure they're all soaked in there and you can really see 
the bubbles. I will tell you that this one is actually pretty active. Um, sometimes you won't see that many bubbles, but you want to let you want to do that and then let it sit for about 30 seconds. And you can keep the coffee that's in there. You don't have to pour it out. Um, we don't want to be that wasteful. And it'll um, settle down. And after 30 seconds, you can pour the rest of the coffee in. And the way you want to do it is kind of work your way around in a circle. It's easier. But the method of pour over really works better if you use a gooseneck tea kettle like, you, like I've got here. I'm sure you could probably use a regular tea kettle and it would work. But you can see that the stream of water coming out of the kettle is very regular. Um, it's not kicking up a lot of turbulence and it's just nicely going into the coffee. You can um, go back and forth with the different circles and you can really easily ease up on the stream. And what I typically do is I just kind of can do a continuous pour. I usually don't stop. I'll just ease up on the stream a little bit. So once the coffee has percolated all the way through down the, to the dripper and you see that it is done, your coffee is done. What happens to me sometimes is the carafe is a little over full. Um, so before I put the, the lid on it, I actually go ahead and pour my first cup of coffee into my cup. And then that takes it down and I can easily put the lid on it. So like we have been very happy with this method. Um, I don't see that we're going to change it anytime soon. And so let me just finish my cup my way. And let's see how it tastes. Oh yeah, that's really good. So how do you guys make coffee? What, tr what methods have you tried? Do you have any words of advice for how we might improve on our method? Share, share with us in the comments below. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, go find your adventure.